Thank you. So hello everyone. Uh, today's class is about silicon. Uh, actually, most of us uh, familiar with silicon as a material for uh, electronics, for chips making, microchips, nanochips making. But today I'm going to give you an overview about an other perspective of silicon. That means the use of silicon in lithium and battery. So I have already taken a class last month about uh, lithium and battery basics. So if some of uh, the students who are here was already there, I hope they will understand well. But I will also give uh, the brief introduction about lithium and battery so that everyone uh, or if anyone is here who is the first time today can understand uh, what we are talking about. So the topic is uh, about silicon as a lithium and battery, uh, the most promising next generation lithium and battery anode. So I'm Ikram Hassan Sohel. I'm working as a head of R&D and a principal investigator of the battery project of Optimus Energy, which is based in Dallas, Texas, USA. So they have a, a uh, R&D facility in Bangladesh, and I'm the head of it, and also the principal investigator of the project about the battery. So today's uh, topic is about silicon. Uh, silicon actually can be used uh, in several ways in lithium and battery anode. Uh, I personally did one research about silicon deposition and uh, silicon uh, carbon coating on silicon. So uh, I will start now. So uh, I will give you a brief introduction about me and then I will go for the slides. So I'm actually a battery professional. I'm working on lithium and battery for the last four years. I was working in a, uh, previously I was working in a European cell manufacturer, Innovat. And then I started working with Optimus, uh, just recently from the month of March, and I have a PhD on lithium and battery. So I am actually uh, working on lithium and battery from scratch to the lithium and battery pack. Each and every steps I'm involved in, and I am actually doing my research as well currently for Optimus. So uh, today's presentation uh, will be followed like this. Lithium and battery basics. I will give some in a brief introduction if somebody is a new here. So there will be basics of anode. I mean, what is anode and what what, what we are gonna talk about today. Then advanced in anode studies. I mean, how far uh, the anode studies have gone so far. Then silicon carbon as a composite uh, or silicon coated carbon and then electro deposition of silicon which is my own work then i will show how the characterizations are being done about this research on battery and then uh, what is the present status of silicon battery in the industry so i have i have put this uh, you know uh, periodic table uh, to give you a brief understanding and that where is silicon actually see everybody we know about it it's a point it's a 4a element and it's just uh, below carbon previously carbon was mostly used even today is also it is being used mostly but silicon has recently come to the uh, focus and people are started working on it on lithium and for lithium and battery anode so I will use a uh, laser point. So why lithium and battery? Uh, maybe all of us uh, very much well, uh, you know, uh, familiar with the uh, electric vehicle. And uh, presently Europe and America, all of them are targeting 2030 as the, uh, as the end of combustion engine vehicle. So the battery research is the most important to uh, replace the combustion engine and battery will define actually will it be possible to replace the uh, combustion engine with lithium ion or any type of battery technology or not 
So I have just presented a, a brief uh, comparison with the different system with combustion engine lithium and battery sodium system. So you can see uh, the combustion engine is the best about, uh, if, if we think about 50 liter of tank of a combustion engine. Uh, so lithium ion is the closest to that combustion engine. That means uh, we need to catch up this combustion engine. And if we think that all of them is in the race, so lithium ion is in the first. If we think that these four are in, is, uh, in, in the doing race for uh, reaching the combustion engine vehicle uh, mileage. So why lithium ion battery is chosen? Uh, it is... Uh, very light, actually the lightest material on earth because it's just, uh, it's atomic number is just three, just below hydrogen, it is placed in the periodic table. So it is the most lightest element. And also it is metal. The good thing is it's metal because for electron flow, uh, for electricity, we need electron flow, flow of electron. So that means positive ion, if we have positive ion, electron can go in and out from this ion, and then we can get the ion and the um, alloy or the material itself when it's, electron is going back and forth. So that's why lithium was chosen. Actually, below lithium, there is sodium, potassium, and just right after that, magnesium, calcium is also there. So after so lithium, sodium is also in the focus. Uh, it, it, it has also a lot of benefits as well in terms of uh, safety and other issues. But in terms of capacity, lithium ion is the best. In fact, it has the highest uh, capacity uh, among this uh, material that is in one A element. So that's why uh, people are uh, racing on lithium ion battery. Even you can see the comparison in the right uh, lower images here. The different uh, battery uh, technologies are on. You know, if you think that uh, lithium and lithium and is good for energy density, also for a uh, power density. So it is it is actually a balanced uh, technology that has both energy and power density. But for example, lead acid battery is just here. Nickel metal hydride has very a good uh, energy density but power density is low so uh, there is also lithium metal which is written in red answer because there is a reason for that so we will just uh, talk about lithium and battery and uh, we, we can see how far lithium has gone <clears throat> that's why people are using this uh, lithium and also it has no memory effect it is very uh, long in cycle life and it normally do not self-discharge. It has very good thermal stability. So uh, I will give a brief introduction about lithium and battery basic. I mean, how lithium and battery works. So lithium and act battery actually works uh, on the basis of electrochemical reaction and intercalation and the intercalation of lithium with anode. And this lithium comes from the cathode. So when we actually charge the battery, that means we are actually taking lithium from cathode to anode. That means we are intercalating lithium or alloying lithium with the anode material presented here. And for this reason, we are forcing from outside, that is we are giving electricity from the grid or from our uh, electric outlet in the home. So this force is actually making this uh, lithium in the cathode side as ion. And then this lithium is actually flowing through this uh, electrolyte and separator and going to the anode and then making an alloy with the carbon or whatever material is presented here. When we are discharging it, it is actually happening right opposite of the charging. That means lithium ion is now traveling from anode to cathode by itself. That means it's a spontaneous process. This time, uh, the 
force will not ne necessary rather electron will pass and the electricity will uh, produce there are a lot of uh, types of cathode like L lco lithium cobalt oxide lmo lithium manganese oxide there is nmc as well uh, but anode is mostly uh, made of carbon material and so far carbon is the most popular as a uh, anode material especially graphite because of its availability also it has uh, very I mean, good stability but uh, carbon is actually creating has it's a hazardous element for the environment and actually lithium and battery is being used to lower the uh, carbon footprint and make a zero carbon emission so people are also doing research on how we can get rid of uh, the carbon from the anode uh, that's why people are doing research on different material and silicon come into this picture when we are talking about replacing carbon with some other anode material so the uh, the lithium and battery actually I, as i told earlier that it works on electrochemical reaction and that is what happens when uh, uh, electricity is given from outside and cathode is actually exerting lithium ion and this lithium ion is passing through the electrolyte and going through separator and electrolyte and passing through the anode and when this lithium ion and electron is coming to the anode it is actually again uh, you know uh, making the lithium ion as a lithium metal and it is actually making an alloy with the carbon that's why you can see here LIXCI that means x uh, amount of lithium has come and the electron has uh, been pushed from the source and then it has become a lithium carbon alloy so the overall reaction is just shown here so the this thing is going back and forth when the charge and discharge is uh, going on so the energy that is uh, uh, actually stored during charge the same amount of energy is exerted or released when it is discharged so the if we talk about uh, the anode now i mean what is anode actually so as we have seen earlier that there is an anode there is a cathode and there is on separator and electrolyte if you think about why this separator is necessary and why this electrolyte actually electrolyte is that giving the lithium ion path to pass from anode to cathode or cathode to anode in this electrolyte it is it is actually highly ionic conductive not electronically conductive so only lithium ion can pass with it because it's a salt of lithium lithium hexafluorophosphate that is written here this separator is actually uh, saving the anode and cathode being short circuited because when we make the battery these two come in very close contact it's just touch almost touch each other but there should be a separation and this separator is actually doing this separation if this two is short circuited or somehow get uh, you know connected with each other from internally like this not outside for the circuit from this side it will be a, it will create fire i mean it will immediately broke into fire so that's why this separator is also necessary so the anode is the place that we have seen so far that the anode is the place where actually lithium is being stored so primarily uh, or in primary cell um, that means uh, uh, that is not rechargeable that means one time use if 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 anybody say what is primary cell it is actually a cell that is not rechargeable that means it's it has lithium but it can just work as a dry cell and it cannot be recharged because it has just uh, given uh, as lithium as an anode so it can just uh, discharge and uh, put the lithium back to the uh, cathode so this is what is called primary cell non-rechargeable 
and it's used lithium metal. When we call about secondary cell, that is what we talk about charge and discharging cell. That means rechargeable cell is called secondary cell. And to this time, up to this time, graphite has mostly used uh, because of its high conductivity. Uh, though its theoretical capacity is a little bit low, uh, which is just uh, 372 milliamp power per gram, but working potential is close to lithium anode, which is good, but it has poor compatibility with electrode. That means if you want to do fast charge this graphite it will create dendrite and when the dendrite is growth uh, this dendritic lithium can penetrate the separator and make the anode and cathode short circuited that can be uh, hazardous and make a uh, fire immediately so people are trying to uh, you know explore some other material so disordered carbon was explored transition metal oxide was also tried like neobium oxide tin oxide some other metals was also used and silicon based material is uh, mostly now people are uh, focusing on because of its high theoretical capacity which is almost 4000 milliamp power per gram or even 4200 milliamp power per gram the problem with silicon there is also problem with silicon that uh, uh, it actually uh, expands highly when silicon lithium is put into the structure of the silicon. Actually, it it expands 400 times when uh, we put lithium or when we charge it. So that's what it creates delamination and cracking uh, in the electrode. And when it's cracking, then it separate it gets separated from one piece to another so some lithium actually uh, you know disconnected become disconnected from each other and that's how the poor cycling performance is normally uh, you know output from the silicon based material so we are doing research people are also doing research on on silicon to overcome this problem so if you see that actually this is just given uh, as an more understanding to give what is to give what is graphite and what is silicon and what is other alloys and lithium metal is presented actually lithium metal is also used as an anode uh, people are also using it for solid state battery but it is quite unsafe because uh, if you use lithium metal lithium metal is very very reacting in environment if you put lithium uh, for uh, lithium um, metal in normal environment it will immediately catch fire so whenever we, we put into this as a directly lithium metal as an anode it has very high risk of uh, fire during you know charge or discharge or if anything happens with the vehicle it can create problem so that's why uh, the anode is not used as you know lithium metal is directly is not used as anode so how actually lithium uh, is stored in the structure of uh, carbon this is important to understand because when i said that uh, silicon is uh, expanding 400 times so how this expansion is actually happening Actually, uh, anode uh, as an anode, carbon is also expands, but this expansion is very low because, as you can see, uh, if you see the carbon structure, it is uh, it's, it's like hexagonal structure, hexagonal close pack structure, and it has a 0.34 nanometer uh, distance uh, from the upper plate to lower, lower plate because graphite is actually has a a uh, uh, layer by layer structure and one layer is uh, not connected with the other layer there is a van der Waals uh, bond in the middle and this uh, there is a gap in the middle of it which is 0 0.34 nanometer so in this 0 0.34 nanometer the lithium ion can very easily fit because the size of the lithium ion is almost half of this uh, distance. 
so lithium ion can be placed here even lithium ion can be placed inside this hexagonal uh, 2d structure because the length is also uh, is higher than what lithium uh, ion has so uh, that's how is actually lithium is stored and is in in silicon structure also uh, lithium also is stored in a similar way uh, when we put silicon inside the uh, lithium uh, lithium put inside the silicon anode so uh, regarding the carbon anode there are also some research that is going on and also some uh, good results have also been found but uh, this has not gone i mean so far or it, has, it is not that good that uh, silicon can deliver so uh, there are some parameters that needs to be changed that means structure of carbon also depends uh, about the capacity a different crystal structure has different capacity then preparation method can be also varied it can also uh, affect the uh, capacity surface is uh, that is connected with the surface because there are some elements sometimes present in the uh, material this can also affect there is also electrolyte that means what electrolyte being used with what material this is also uh, sometimes studied and it also need to be considered so uh, that's the thing that uh, people are trying to get and minimum as possible and integrate other materials with it so that uh, we can get higher capacity and reduce the size so there is also uh, uh, i mean good uh, carbon promising carbon materials as well i think you have already uh, heard about uh, carbon nanotube which is a very good candidate uh, for lithium and battery anode people are also researching on that but again it is carbon uh, that's why uh, people are not uh, that much interested but uh, 2d uh, graphene and uh, carbon nanotube is also very promising uh, in terms of uh, lithium and battery anode and even one of the research has been done which was able uh, to get almost 500 uh, million power per gram capacity up to 10 cycles afterwards it was not that good but it was promising a result uh, with a fuller nc70 structure uh, it is a, a 1d carbon material it has also very good uh, capacity as you can see here so carbon is also on the line but the thing is silicon has way better capacity than carbon that you can see here uh, the lower uh, image or the lower curve here is called charging it's alloying and discharging that means this way it is charging and this way when it is this being discharged so uh, if you see here the first cycle is here the second cycle is here so i mean first charge is here first discharge is here so there is a gap between this actually this is what it creates problem for lithium uh, for silicon anode and that's it is what happening because of the expansion that i have mentioned earlier it it normally expands up to 400 percent so actually uh, this capacity loss or initial uh, capacity loss is also significant but even if it's the capacity loss you can see that at first cycle it was almost 4000 and second cycle it is 1000 which is also two uh, three times more than uh, carbon but there is other problem as well that means uh, if you start cycling and continuously cycle see the uh, after 10 cycle it is just here almost 100 200 so that means uh, there is some modification necessary in the silicon structure or its uh, procedure making procedure to make it usable for a lithium ion battery. 
so people have tried uh, carbon coating uh, on silicon uh, material or silicon powder silicon particles as you can see here i mean novel silicon based composite uh, have uh, widely used to eliminate volume expansion i mean what is this volume expansion and how it is happening as i said that there is a you know a expansion when silicon comes uh, lithium comes into this uh, structure of silicon so the silicon expands so if we can do one thing that is we can if we can coat the carbon on this silicon and if we can make a hollow space uh, between this silicon and carbon is a surface when it expands it will not go uh, far uh, about this uh, not go away from this carbon bubble and then that's how the lithium will be on the surface of this carbon and silicon as a result the silicon will not crack with charge and discharge continuous charge and discharge so this is actually called yolk yolk shell or core core shell structure that is carbon coating on silicon so uh, this is also done for uh, other purpose as well for example there is a solid electrolyte interface growth during uh, charge and discharge so this solid electrolyte uh, uh, interface growth can be stabilized with this carbon coating as well so this is a good thing for carbon as well so it is also necessary to uh, think about the size of the silicon so the if the silicon is nano uh, sized that means if the silicon is very small in size then it will be much more uh, efficient in charge and and discharge so reduction of silicon particles is also necessary or it can be a good uh, it can play a good role to make um, the silicon a uh, non expandable and usable as a, a good lithium and battery anode actually silicon dioxide even that is a very well known and is also um, you know abundant in the surface uh, which is sand and people are using it for making the glass so this silica can be also directly being used as a lithium ion battery anode but the thing is it has a little bit lower capacity the capacity is around 100 uh, milliamp power per gram while silicon particle has 4000 milliamp power per gram but the thing is uh, this silicon dioxide has a good property uh, if, if anybody is uh, familiar with uh, the uh, um, chips making that uh, or that means uh, the etching etching procedure this etching procedure uh, can uh, uh, be done for silica and when this etching is done this silicon becomes a actually created hole between carbon uh, surface and uh, silicon surface that means if we coat carbon on silica and then do the etching then the oxide layer will go out and there will be a hollow structure so people are also trying that as well so this is what is actually done to make the silicon uh, more stable and more uh, cycling cycle make it more cyclable because with the cycle uh, the uh, silicon structure breaks that's what create a very uh, problematic nature and is unstable behavior in a silicon anode so there are some other method as well that i personally am working with or i worked on um, for my phd so what we did we actually did silicon deposition directly electrochemical deposition from non-aqueous media 
uh, which has very uh, good uh, you know advantage that means uh, when the lithium ion battery is anode is um, produced it need, needs to go through several steps like uh, slurry making casting then drying but if electrochemical deposition is used directly this lit this silicon can be deposited on the surface of any current collector like uh, copper or uh, nickel then it can be directly used as a lithium and battery anode against the cathode so people are working on it so we are also able to make the deposition on a nickel foam and also foil as you can see here this is actually a, an SEM image uh, magnified image and the surface has silicon on it this white color representing the silicon and this uh, is actually a copper current collector that means silicon was deposited on that from non-aqueous media so there are a lot of uh, silicon precursors there uh, that needs to be dissolved in several media like acetonitrile tetrahydrofuran, some other uh, materials that means uh, that is used as a, a solvent to dissolve uh, trichlorosilane or tetrachlorosilane. We use tetrachlorosilane or trichlorosilane both and we were able to make the silicon. And uh, when we do the EDS from this place, from uh, middle of this place, middle of this image, you can see that there is some carbon and oxygen is also present and there is copper which is underneath of that and silicon is the mostly present on the surface actually this carbon and oxygen is always there in the eds because of vacuum i mean lower vacuum or uh, the holder the holder is actually the sample holder is actually made of carbon so sometimes this carbon and oxygen is always there so the main element is actually silicon and copper in that surface or image that you can see here. And that is deposited from non-aqueous media. And the good thing is the deposition is also nano in size. That means the deposition thickness is few nanometers. So this is also good, as I have said earlier, that if the particle size or the film size, thin film size is uh, in nanometer size, it performs well and uh, during charging and discharging with the battery as a lithium and battery uh, so uh, carbon uh, composite silicon carbon composite as well uh, can be used so this is silicon coated with carbon this is silicon deposited on directly current collector and this one is carbon and silicon composite so what is composite? A composite actually makes when we mix uh, two, three elements or two, three materials together. So it is also beneficial to mm, you know, mix silicon and carbon together and just ball mill it and mix it very well so that silicon and carbon come into contact. And whenever we are trying to cycle it, this uh, interface, carbon and silicon interface can be helpful for uh, you know cycling and gi uh, giving stability the, as you can see here if if you see this image this pure crystalline silicon when we try to cycle it after a few cycle from this 1400 directly come to 200 second cycle and within 10 cycle it is die out but when we make it silicon carbon composite that means silicon is pure and but we are making it composite with the carbon then you can see that it can even cycle in thousand milliamp power per gram that means when we use pure silicon it is here when you use with the carbon which is very good in capacity then it has a very a good capacity almost thousand milliamp power per gram so that is a good way and when we deposited silicon uh actually we got almost 2000 milliamp power per gram capacity that means double of it so this is also even better so when you use amorphous carbon 
uh, it is uh, it is not that stable as you can see it is very you know, degrading in actually though it has a very good capacity 2000 but you can see that it is not stable every cycle it is losing capacity this is actual cycle number so first cycle was here second cycle here and with the goal after 250 cycle the first cycle give you 2000 and to after 250 cycle you, you can give 1000 that means your capacity has become half so which is not good even if it is uh, if it, it has 1000 uh, million power per gram capacity but it is not good because it has dying nature it has uh, it is unstable but you can see the uh, crystalline silicon and composite with carbon you can see that it has a, uh, at the beginning it was a little bit you know unstable or uh, unstable in nature but after 100 cycle it was almost stabilized which is good and which is really necessary for making uh, the battery this stability is very necessary that's what we are looking for from silicon silicon is normally unstable like this or like this but if we do if we, if we can make it stable then it will be uh, something usable otherwise it will not be usable so uh, this uh, carbon uh, composite uh can be made from i mean it can be made with mixing with graphite with carbon or making a carbon from different source like amorphous carbon so in in my proposal actually uh, we proposed that uh, we use silica which is very available in the nature and that means uh, we will do it uh, we, we will uh, convert it to silicon with a magnetothermic reaction then we will apply carbon quotation on it and then we will use it as a carbon silicon ca coated carbon as well as composite that means we actually combine this coated carbon quotation and composite and also another one was also electrochemical deposition so after uh, cycling it when we are actually uh, trying to cycle our silicon uh, deposited on different medium or different substrate we were able to uh, go uh, almost 2000 milliamp hour per gram this one is not from our article this is from different article they were able to get 1000 milliamp hour per gram this one was able to get almost 750 but in our study, we were able to get uh, more than 1,500 milliamp hour per gram capacity when we were uh, we were we were cycling it after uh, charge and discharge uh, after you know depositing it on nickel foam. So uh, we actually uh, deposited uh, nickel on nickel foam by this way with this setup that means there was a, a silicon uh, non-aqueous media and there was a, a non-aqueous uh... uh, can you hear me now hello yes we can hear you don't worry okay uh, okay some some people were telling that uh, they were not able to hear i hope it is okay now okay so this was a setup that we followed for deposition of silicon so there was a reference electrode and counter electrode and working electrode as a counter electrode we use graphite plate and as a reference electrode we use platinum wire which is shown here now we use this a potential stat or galvanized electrochemical work station to deposit uh, because we need to uh, supply current uh, between this carbon uh, counter electrode and working electrode and reference electrode uh, i mean the measurement should be done with the basis of the reference electrode so this was the setup and the media was non-aqueous media and we have already published that article if somebody is interested uh, you can collect it uh, from uh, the uh, from the source the when it, it will be shared 
So the thing is, uh, the deposition was successful and uh, it is possible and we have already actually tried it and it worked well. So when the deposition was done, it was necessary to actually, you know, uh, characterize it. And characterization is done as a short ACM EDS XRD Raman. And we have we have got uh, very good uh, silicon picks that you can see here. This is a Raman study. This 520 is for silicon. The peak was very sharp. In EDS, it was good. In uh, XRD analysis, it was also showing very good uh, silicon peaks as well. So uh, when actually uh, the uh, characterization of material was done, it is necessary to actually do the electrochemical characterization because if you want to uh, prove or if you want to use any material as an anode, you need to go through these steps. First, you, de you deposit or you, uh, you know, uh, prepare it or synthesize it. Then you, you go through the material characterization that is done here. Same EDS, XRD Raman or whatever you can do. Then you need to go through this electrochemical characterization. This electrochemical characterization will tell you that how far, how good is your material? Is it possible to use it as a, a energy storage media or not? So this is actually this uh, cyclic voltammetry analysis that can be done to see how good or uh, when the silicon will be alloyed with the lithium and when the de-alloy will be happening. So this is also a characterization, but it's called electrochemical characterization. Then there is electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. This is also an electrochemical characterization. So this is a very important for silicon because silicon is normally is very, you know, uh, is not conducting, that conducting like carbon. So it, it, it has some resistivity. So this resistivity growth is necessary to, uh, you know, analyze. That is what is done with electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. It is a very good uh, and it is very well known term in battery research. So this actually done with the, with the help of electrochemical workstation that I have shown here, this one. And the result is analyzed and then fitted with the circuit uh, like this. So any, any circuit can be uh, made, but the thing is the software will suggest you some circuitry and you need to fit this experimental data with this circuit and then with this circle and uh, straight line, you can come into a conclusion. Uh, so first semicircle, we, when you will get it from EIS, it is actually represent, representing the solid electrode interface resistance that I have told you that during charge and discharge, solid electrode interface is formed. Then the second semicircle is actually represent the uh, uh, charge transfer resistance and so on and so forth. That's how, if, if you see those things and it has very minimum in uh, nature, that means the num number, this real uh, ohm values are minimum then you can tell that, okay, your uh, material is good and it's good for, for uh, energy storage. So uh, the I, I will finish uh, soon. So that is what is actually uh, commercialized so far. I want to give an overview that uh, how far has psyllium has been commercial, silicon has been uh, commercialized. So as I said, it has very good capacity, the volumetric capacity is good, but the volume change is very high. The potential versus lithium is also very good, 0.4. So uh, this, uh, in spite of having this problem of uh, huge expansion, people was able to, uh, you know, integrate silicon very successfully. So some of the company like Sila is based on California, USA. Uh, so they are 50% using, if, if they, they were able to integrate 50% silicon in their anode material. One company uh, was able to make even 100%. Actually, it depends on what silicon or what type of silicon they are using. Maybe it is 100% silicon, but it has some uh, other type or even, even some oxides because silicon oxide is also used. But... Uh, they are also claiming that they were able to use even 100% of it. 
and they were able to get 900 watt hour per liter. So different companies have already used silicon and some some even it tried to five to 75 percent and 80 percent, 100 percent. So actually, if anybody says 100 percent, actually there are something that they are not actually uh, telling uh, everything because. 100% silicon, if it is pure, as we have seen that it is cracks very fast. It cracks very fast. So it is not possible in theoretically. So they are using some material to dope it and then use it as a 100% without any binder or without any carbon conducting agent. That's why they are calling it 100% silicon element. Then I we were able to use uh, 5 to 10, 15% and it was working well. So people are using it and they are also getting very good capacity as well. So the main uh, actually goal is reducing the size of the battery so that if you can use less material, that means uh, for same capacity, graphite needs 10 times more weight. For example, if you want to get uh, 400 um, or 4000 milliamp power per gram capacity, you need to employ almost uh, 40 grams uh, sorry uh, four four grams of graphite for example that amount of capacity can be achieved with just one gram of silicon so that's 10 times less four gram and 40 gram so that's why people are trying to use silicon and make the battery size as small as possible because silicon or anode is the place where lithium go and reside during charging so that's all for today. Thanks for listening patiently. And I will be happy to clarify if you have any question. So feel free to ask if you have any question. Thank you. Thank you, Jammu. Uh, if you have any question, you can use the hand reaction to raise a question or leave a comment in the chat. For now, yeah. I have a, a question in the comments. Uh, yes. Let me see. This one from Charles Otsango. My question is, what, what where do get lithium ion before being extract? Which method is used to locate it? Uh, can you repeat it? I didn't actually get it. What method? Uh, which method is used to locate the lithium ion before being extract? Uh, it is actually a composite before being extract. Uh, it is actually uh, not clear. I mean, what he is trying to say, if if he is here, if he can clarify the question. I mean, it it is about synthesize of lithium or composite, or I mean, the the terms that he used is actually i'm not familiar with about this i did not get actually what is actually i'm trying to see which question if you have a question uh how is the future of this battery i can see that question but i cannot see the other question so if he is here can you clarify it and yes, Charles, say the question. you can use the hand reaction to 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 clarify the question, or you can write it again on the chat. Because for the meantime, if anyone else has a question, clear. they can use the hand reaction. Yeah. So we can with how much reduction in the capacity is that one? This different. You can answer that in the meantime. Okay. So I will see uh, this one, this DJ, uh, Dr. Jamie. So how is the future of this battery when each day we know new types? Okay. So this is actually uh, uh, it's a little bit true, but actually you cannot see uh, each day you see the new types because the research is going on. And heavy research is going on as I told you that battery will be now the oil of the vehicle of the 
uh, engine of a vehicle of car so this is very important so people are doing a lot of research so the battery companies or the battery manufacturer actually is trying to you know are trying to uh, uh, people uh, inform those research and that's why they are you know using the social media and they are giving okay this breakthrough has happened people this battery will never end so that's why you see every new type every day but the thing is the electrochemical analysis or electrochemical behavior says or suggests that nothing will be as good as lithium in terms of capacity because as i have told you that lithium is the lightest metal and it is the smallest metal in the uh, surface that is uh, ever discovered. So it is just below hydrogen. That means it is very light, as light just below hydrogen. That means the second lightest after hydrogen metal. So uh, you can see it, it is very promising. That's why uh, future of lithium ion is very good. But the thing is, research needs to be done to make it safe. That's why people are working on it. So during uh, COVID, you're also uh, every day you are also hearing something like this, right? Today something new happened. So this way they are they were able to uh, detect uh, COVID. So when the things is research is going on, you you normally see these things regularly. But it does not necessarily mean that this is what is always happen or what is uh, you need to you do not need to pay attention for it. But the thing is, research is going on and the future of lithium and battery is the best because of theoretical capacity and theoretically it would be the best, but it needs to be made safe. Okay. Uh, second question, with how much reduction in a capacity of a typical lithium and battery, it could be interpreted as a degrade on. Okay. Actually, when you see degraded capacity, uh, you need to think that uh, with each and every cycle, it should not uh, degrade one, I mean, more than 1%. That means for cycle one uh, and cycle two, between this, the capacity should not be degraded, I mean, more than 1%. I mean, as low as possible, even 1% is also not that good, or even if it continues, one percent one percent it will be you know uh, degrade faster but uh, at the beginning first few cycles at the first 10 to 50 10 to 50 cycles one percent point five percent point one percent this degradation is allowed but after 50 cycle if it is not stabil stabilized and if even if it is there some degree of uh, you know instability and degradation uh, the battery is not uh, termed as a safe battery or a stable battery, and it is not usable in commercial purpose. So what makes a battery strong? Uh, is it the material type used? Uh, yes, definitely the material is also important because as I told you earlier that carbon is the mostly used and it is safe, but it has other problem of low capacity, you cannot charge it faster when you are trying to use it in car you need to charge it faster so the material is also very important playing a very important role definitely uh, uh, to turn a battery as a strong or weak what is the difference between graphene powder batteries powered batteries graphene powered batteries uh graphene powered so actually i think you there is nothing called graphene powered batteries maybe you are talking about graphene as in battery anode is being used so yes as i told you uh, graphene is also good as a candidate because it has uh, you, you can just use it as a 2d material and in 2d you can uh, uh, accommodate more lithium than other structure or uh, have a, i mean uh, irregular structure. So graphene and carbon nanotube. Uh, if you know graphene, then you should also know carbon nanotube. If you just roll a carbon nano a graphene uh, in a 
you know one d uh, or two d surface and make it a, a tubular shape it become carbon nanotube so that's really uh, 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 it's, it's a good material as a carbon anode so i i cannot see much uh, what is the difference between graphene powered batteries battery okay i think uh, that's all i cannot see much much question here see if you have any question you can open your microphone yeah. and ask and we have a question from dr Kale, and let's see what he has yes. to say mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon are you able to get me there yes I yeah, can hear thank you. you for the wonderful presentation. Being the second one in the series, and as we realize that uh, we are moving away from uh, uh, oil depot use of oil deposits and this other kind of uh, uh, mined minerals because of the problem we are facing, which is uh, global warming. And then it means that uh, this is the way out which will help us to be able to use uh, solar energy because we can be able to store our solar energy in the batteries and we can be able to power our systems from the batteries. However, Right. As an as an engineer, I, I I have some understanding, but there are people who who, who have a challenge because they are asking about uh, what is this silicon? How do you get it? Uh, mm -hmm. Silicon, according to me, is obtained from uh, from silica. And the silica is actually gotten from the normal sea sand, the normal sand we use for building houses and doing all these other things. Now, for, for those people who would not understand how you, got, how you get to prepare this normal sand, which is silica, to become silicon, could you please try to explain, because that was the question which was being asked, how do you get silicon from the raw material, which is the natural, uh, natural sand, which is silica, to become silicon? I think that was the first okay. question. I am also okay. interested to know more about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Actually, silica directly cannot be uh, or uh, the sand itself cannot be directly put into the magnesiothermic reduction. You need to make it silica first. Pure silica should be made first. Then you can use it as with magnesium powder or magnesium metal powder and heat treat it around 700, 800 degrees centigrade for two or three hours. You will get silica to silicon. But the problem is before uh, I mean getting this silica from the sand, there are some procedure. You need to clean the sand, then you need to dissolve the silica inside uh, the a solvent. And th that's what we, uh, we, we need, for example, uh, some acid. For example, if, at first we need to get rid of some unwanted material. If you use uh, hydrochloric acid, some other met metal inside the sand will be removed. Then you need to uh, put the uh, sand, I mean purified sand, with some uh, very highly basic element like sodium hydroxide, which is very basic base, high strong base. You need to mix that sand. That means after uh, putting it with the hydrochloric acid, then you need to dry it, clean it very well. Then you need to mix with uh, sodium hydroxide that means very strong base then you need to heat it almost 400 to 500 degree centigrade for an hour after that you will get a mixture of it this mixture you need to uh, you know uh, filter it with a very 
and not very th uh, small uh, pore size filter, a regular filter. If you put the filter paper and pour the uh, solution that is made with uh, sodium hydroxide, then you will get some uh, whitish element uh, above this uh, filter paper. This filter paper is actually silicon and it is actually sili silicon uh, carbon uh, silica silicate is actually presented here. And this, when you have this one, this whitish element, you need to uh, rinse it with water. Then you need the pure silica. So there are very you know uh, uh, complex steps presented uh, how you can make sand to silica, but it is possible. And people are even doing it. If you see the uh, glass industry, they are doing it. They are making glass which is pure silica and others is other uh, material inside and making it co colorful. They are doing it. So it is not a difficult job. Even you can get the silica itself with a very lower price. It's just few dollars per kilogram. So people are doing that. People are buying silica directly, pure silica, making silicon with magnesiothermic reduction, then coating carbon, mixing with carbon, then use it as a uh, anode for lithium ion battery. So if you want to know more about this uh, silica from making from sand, uh, I will recommend you uh, some article or if you search in the uh, Google or in the YouTube, you will see a video. All the videos are not authentic, but I tried one that I have said you. So if you found this one with sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, uh, I think it will be a good one. If you want to try, you can try that one. Thank you. Thank you, Vikramul. I think that's the last question. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for another class. And see you tomorrow at the Thank same you. hour.